welcome back to My Own Worst Enemy. I've got the secondary game table set up now. I thought I would do a couple of turns, maybe, or more of Empires in America, the French and Indian War 1754 through 1763 from Victory Point Games. Now, you may remember I did a playthrough of Cruel Necessity, also from Victory Point Games, in a box very similar to this. And this actually, this version of Empires in America, this is actually a second printing, a second version. This is the original. And I, I bought this back in the day. It's just a small Ziploc bag with the paper cards and just some standard cardboard, thick white core, really, just basic counters. And I don't know if you can see inside there or not, but there were some really tiny little D6s that came with it. And so the, this is the actually the, the second printing of that. Nice job too. The, the components in this thing are really nice. And as you can see, it says it has a 17 inch by 22 inch paper game map. Now this map did come split into two pieces. And if you're looking here and here, you're probably thinking, oh my God, I, I taped the map together. What the hell am I thinking? No, that, well, I did tape it together, but this is scotch removable tape. So this comes right off and this looks great for keeping these maps together while I play with. No harm to the map itself, I assure you. So Empires in America, it's the components here, like I said, we're our top notch. Now it says on here playing time 50 minutes. If you can see that there in the corner, that that's ridiculous. <laughs> There's just no other way to put it. There's no way you're going to play this game in 50 minutes. I mean, even if you know the rules and you are playing as fast as you can, I don't think you're going to finish in 50 minutes. I think this probably is a much longer game than that. And honestly, what's funny is that this version says it plays in 25 minutes. Uh, no way. Absolutely no way. But anyway, the components, and I'm going to grab the rule book here. I was ready to take a look at that. But the components, well, let's just, let's go ahead and, and go into the rule book because I'm going to take you through the setup and we'll talk about some of these components really quick as we go along. Setup the game is easy. You put the map out and you place the five British army markers on the map. So before we get too far, what are we looking at? This is a States of Siege game. And you're, I'm sure you're familiar with the States of Siege game. In this case, you're gonna be playing as the French and the British are gonna be trying to come into Montreal to basically boot France out of the new world. So you're going to have these five tracks where the British will be coming towards Montreal from. And the tracks are starting over here. This is the Ohio, and it says the Ohio Valley, and this is where your leader cards will go. But you've got the Ohio Valley, you've got Champlain, Upper Main, St. Lawrence, and the Great Lake. So you have five of those tracks coming into Montreal, and you are trying to stop those English forces from advancing into Montreal. If they get into Montreal, it's game over. So typical states of siege game. So to set the game up, it tells you to put out these five army markers, and this is what you're gonna track the movement of the English with, and I'll let you take a look at these. Now these markers are very nice. They're, let's see if I get the camera to uh, cooperate here. So that's the army of the Ohio Valley there for the uh, British, and these markers are really nice, thick, thicker even than Blue Panther counters. And they are laser cut because I get soot all over my hands as I play this more and more, but eventually I'm hoping that will wear off. So you have these army counters, they'll be marching in and you're trying to stop them. There are forts that are fortresses that are already on the map that will stop the armies advancing temporarily. You still have to boot them out. You can also build forts and trading posts. So this would be an example of a, well, let's see if the camera's gonna cooperate again. So this will be a trading post and well, let's see, is that gonna, yeah, so that's a trading post. You'll build those to increase your, your um, battalions on your armies, and I'll show you what those are in a second. And of course you can build forts, and you are limited by the number of counters there are, so how many forts and trading posts you can build. So not getting too far ahead of myself here, let's step back. So it's set up, we've got our five army marker counters out. So this is a card driven game, and it tells you to separate all the cards out into three separate piles. So what, basically what's going on here is you're gonna have your starter cards and those are gonna have, they're gonna have white titles to them. So if you look at this action card, note that action there is in white and it, it, that's the cards that tells you to pull aside and put onto the board. There are other cards that are, and I wouldn't pull this one because we're gonna have to go through it in, anyway, it's not gonna matter. But if you look at the top of that one, it is uh, what they call like a dark, silver, I think, looks brown to me, or even black on the camera here, but those are gonna get 
mixed up and put into the, the draw pile for the first part of the game. Now in that draw pile, there is a Seven Years War card that will come up. The, the decks are shuffled such that you will have three complete turns before it's even possible for that card to come out. So you'll have three turns of no Seven Years War. And when the Seven Years War starts, it's going to change things. You're going to you're going to shuffle all these other cards into the deck and start pulling from the entire deck versus just the starter deck. And the object of the game will be to get through the deck, get rid of the deck, and survive. And that, that's going to be very hard to do. There's a lot of cards in this game, and it's to get rid of the, all those cards and survive. For the French, is going to be very difficult. So you, you get your cards set up, and you've got your army markers out, and that's really about it. It tells you to take the white card. So this is the beginning of the game. And we are going to put out Langelad. I believe that, I don't, I think that's how you say it. I don't know. I'm, so I'm going to, I'm going to murder French names and probably some English ones too in this game. We start with two leaders, one for the French and then one for the British. So it's Braddock over here. And the way that the leader cards work, and I'm going to see if I can lift one off the board here. When you put these cards out, they are going to start with a, a reputation of mediocre and their, their battalions marker will start at its maximum amount. And both of those will change as you play the game. So you put those out with their reputation and their battalions at the entry level, we'll call it. Braddock is the same way. He's at mediocre. He's got three battalions versus Longalod's two. So Braddock is a little bit stronger there. The numbers off to the left of the strength tracks, this is your leader rating, and that will, for the French, that will drive your number of action points that you will get per turn. That also comes into play in battle, where this will help with your initiative rolls. And you want to win initiative in battles because that's, whoever wins the initiative in a battle gets to fire first, they call it first fire, and you really want to do that first because if you're reduced to returning fire, Return fire is going to be based on how many battalions you have left from surviving that first round of fire. Initiative is very important, and we'll see that when I do a battle example. So I think we've covered about everything, at least introductory-wise, and as we get into this thing, I will talk in more detail about what I'm doing. Again, it's a States of Siege game. I'm sure you've seen this before, and it is a... I've played this several times. This is a fun game, if you like States of Siege games. This is a fun one, and I do recommend it. So what we're going to do, we're just going to dive in here and play. I'm just flipping through the rule book here to see if I missed anything, but I don't think I did. Like I said, it, we'll, I'll explain as I go along here. I will just leave the rule book here on the table to grab, well, let's just leave it off to the side so we don't mess up anything. So what do we do? We have the sequence of play right here on the game map, and I'm just going to go through it as we see it. A lot of good information on this map, by the way. You've got your action point costs when you go to, to spend your action points. Nice reminder what you can do there. Sequence of play, your battle sequence is here in these four blocks, and then your track priorities. Now this is where it tells you how, which order to move the armies in and for the uh, English, so that's important. Leader placement, as the British leaders come onto the board, they will apply for a job on one of these tracks, and I'll show you how that works. So that's it. So sequence of play, the first thing we do is, is called the, the historic phase, and we draw four cards if the Seven Years War card is not out, and it's not out at the beginning of the game, like I said, you've got three turns before that can possibly come out. Once it does come out, then you will have to draw six of these at a time. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to take the first four off in the order they're in there. So one, two, three, four, and I'm just going to set them here, and that way I know that those are the four cards I've got to go through to complete the first part of this sequence of play. And you simply just do that. You, so you start with the very first card and you look at it. So this one's a, a provincial card. And it is for, if you look to the left there, provincial name, you can see that there's a white flag. That's the French flag. Provincials always go into the play area, the tableau they call it. So that's down here where we've already got one French leader and one action card. The action card that's already out is a marine group that we can use to fight some of the battles. And over here, I've, I've got another action card tilted to its side. This is a card that I have in my hand that in order to get this card to play this card, I have to spend an action point to get it out onto my board that I can use it from. This one's in my hand and I can't use it until I actually pay for it. 
And once I pay, this is a militia card. So when I pay for that, it can actually sit in this table till I'm ready to use it. And if it were just an action, some other action, and we'll see some examples of that hopefully, then I have to spend the action point and then use it. I can't hold it. So the, we're gonna put the provincials out into onto the table because that's where they go. It is not an action card. Action cards go into your hand. And then we simply draw the next card. And here's an example of an action card. So you can see that it says action again. It's French because it has the French identifier on it. And it says uh, Montreal Militia, apply light troops bonus. So the light troops bonus will come into play when we roll for initiative. And basically it states that if you're in the woods, and so any green box is considered woods, that you get a plus one to your initiative roll to try to win the initiative. The number off to the side, the little two there, is how many battalions that the militia will bring to the battle. So you come in with two, the militia, you can play this card to get two more, you'll have four, and that will determine the number of dice you roll when you fire. Again, we're gonna see all this. And so the action card goes into your hand though. So I'll have to pay to get that out into play. So the third card is another action card, and I, this is the third French card in a row. It's another militia card. So I'm gonna put that into my hand. I don't think I've ever seen a game start quite like this before. And so the final card for this phase is a British event, the Ohio Company. And this tells you exactly what it is. It's an event. If the Ohio Valley Army is in its number three or number four box, so this is the Ohio Valley track, which Braddock is on, and the Ohio Valley marker, the army marker, is in its colony space four. So it is in the four box. It advances one box. It says but C 6.7, but that's not going to apply here. If it is not, then discard. So basically when you get, when you pull a card like this, if you can do the action, you do it. And if you can't, you're going to discard it. Very specific about where these cards go when they are played. So this one says discard. It'll go into the discard pile. So it is not removed from the game entirely. It's a chance it could possibly come back up again. So we're going to put it in the discard pile, but well, let's see. Wait a second. Yeah, so it says, if not, then discard. So we're actually gonna do this one. So this one will go out of the game. So we're gonna advance the Ohio Valley marker from four to three. So now it's moving towards Montreal. So getting closer to Montreal already. And if, you, if you're wondering about where these cards go when you play them, if you look at the back of the rule book, it, it has on the back here exactly what to do with these cards. So this one does say discard, uh, whether you play the event or not. So it's gonna go into our discard pile. And so that is it for the first step in the sequence of play. We have drawn our cards and we have gone through them. And now we go to the British phase. This is where the British get to take their actions. So the first thing we do is, is a sub step here, a rally recall leaders. And what happens here is you can, if you, if you don't have leaders on the board and you need leaders, you can get them. Recall leaders. If you have too many leaders, then the game also will, will attempt to balance that out. We don't have any of that here. We've got one British and one French leader, so we're okay. And then the next thing we do in step B is advance led armies. Automatically, each army that has a leader will advance a space on the track. And we start in the track priority order. It's not too important in these first turns because we really only have one leader. You know, it tells you you would start with St. Lawrence and advance if there were leaders in the spaces. The only one that has a leader is here in the Ohio Valley. That's Braddock. So that one will advance again. You saw that we had an event card that caused the army to advance, and now we just had the normal advancement of the army. So already they're, they're getting close to Montreal. They've got one, two, and they're in Montreal. So that's gonna be a problem for us, the French. So that's the only one that's gonna move. And so then we go to check for defeat, but we don't need to worry about that, it's too early. So now we go to step three, the French phase. And it's the same thing, the rally recall, if your leader had a reputation of, let's say he was disgraced or, or I think it's even dishonor, then they would be removed from the game, either permanently or temporarily. I can't remember. Again, though, it's right here on the back. Recycle when sacked, discard when they're um, eliminated. So but if, we'll see an example of that, I think, I hope. No need for rally recall of the leaders on the French. And now we gain our action points. And the way you gain action points is this number off to the left of the strength track. So here we're only going to get one because we only have one leader and his 
his uh, rating is a one. So we're gonna get one action point. That is it. And now when you get your action points, you spend them. So with an action point, we, like I said earlier, we can spend that action point to bring a card out if it's militia or, or an army. We can, we can spend that action point to get it out onto the board. We can spend that action point, one action point to attack. So in other words, we have an army on the Ohio Valley advancing on us, and we can now spend one action point to attack that army, which is probably what I want to do here. Uh, we can also spend it to take a replacement, but I can't do that yet, because remember that trading posts will, I'll have to buy a trading post to put on the board that will allow me to buy a replacement battalion, and uh, I, we don't have that yet. And basically the way that works is, for every trading post on the board that you've built, you get to buy one strength point for your, your leaders to replace your battalions. And then for two action points, I can build a fort or a trading post. In this case, like I said, I only have one, and I think it's gonna be in my best interest to attack this army that's marching down into the Ohio Valley. And I'm just looking, cause some of these, these cards will tell you where they can be used. And the ones that are in my hand that I have not placed, this one would have been a nice one to have had out the, uh, this militia, Montreal militia, cause you can see on there that it can attack along that Ohio Valley line and, or Champlain. But in this case, having it in the Ohio Valley would have been useful. But like I said, those are in my hand. I haven't paid to use those. I'm looking at the Provincials here, and then we have this other action card. We have our Marines, and I'm gonna bring them out. Before you do that, and we don't have it in this case, as the cards are pulled, the British can also get Provincials and other things down here. So we would check first to see if they had any Provincials they could bring to this battle, but they don't. And then I would, I would go to my, I would make my decision to bring any um, auxiliary forces they're called to the battle. And the battle sequence is here. The first thing we've got to do is commit our leaders. In this case, again, it's already committed. We've got Braddock and we've got Langlade here. I'm going to show that there's going to be a battle here. So basically we're trying to push that army back. And I'm going to grab a battle fault marker. So when you, you can only fight one battle per turn with your leader. So they provide these battle markers Battle fault. So I'm just going to set it off to the side for a second here to show that this is the leader that is fighting this battle. And now I'm going to bring my auxiliary forces over here with this card as a reminder to me that they are joining this battle. So we're going to have our first battle here. So the first thing we need to do is check for who has, the, well, it's not the first thing. We've already gone through the first things to get our forces committed, our leaders here. And it says check for minor engagement. Minor engagement is if you had one leader involved. And it's possible to have only one leader. Like if there weren't Braddock here and I were attacking the Ohio Valley, that's considered a minor engagement because only one leader is there. But that's not here. We have a major engagement. So yeah, now we're going to determine tactical initiative. And like I said, this is critical because this will determine who hits that first fire. So the way we do that is we look at our, we're going to roll a D6. I'm going to grab a blue and a red. Blue for the French, red for the British. So we're going to roll 2d6. And to that, we are going to add the leader rating. And in this case, they're both one, which is good for me. And so we'll roll, we'll add one for that. If it's in a wilderness and you have light troops available, you get the light troop bonus. Well, he has no auxiliary forces, so he won't get it. But I do. If you look at this card, it says apply the light troop bonus. And if that'll focus, you can see there that it says apply the light troop bonus bonus that's going to give us another another plus one so and then the other thing is if there's a plus or minus for any tactical initiative initiative modifiers for certain leaders and cards in play we don't have that either so i'm going to get plus two to this roll uh, one for my leader and one for my light troops and he's going to get a plus one so let's see who gets the initiative here so that looks like a two for the British and a six for the French. So his final result is three, because remember he gets plus one for his rating. And then we get six plus two is eight. Uh, yeah, we won the initiative there, so that is good. All right, so after we determine who has the initiative, we conduct first fire. And then the way that works is for every battalion I have, I can roll one D six. And to, and, and to hit 
To score a hit, you have to roll a five or a six to get a hit. We are going to do that. I'm going to take, let's see, and, and how do I know? And I put him back in the wrong place. How do I know how many, how many dice to roll? How many battalions are there? Well, remember that we had two from the auxiliary force card and then uh, Longalod has two himself. So that's 4d6 I'm going to roll. So we'll grab two whites and a blue and a red. And I'm looking for fives and sixes here. So let's see what we get. And <laughs> that's a complete miss. I rolled horribly there. And you don't want to do that because now he gets to return fire. So I've missed and Braddock is going to do his uh, return fire, second fire they call it. So he has three battalions. So he gets to fire three dice at me. So he's going to fire back. <laughs> the dice can be cruel, cruel, cruel. So that is three hits. Oh my God. All right. So what does that mean? Well, so one of the things, one of the special abilities on this card, these auxiliary cards, is they can absorb one of those hits for me. So they're going to absorb one of the hits. So I still have two hits I've got to take, which is horrible. What happened? Well, so Longalod here has only two brigades. So with the one he absorbed, he's got to take two. That's going to take his battalions down to zero. And that is going to get rid of our leader. And if you look on the book, it says when they are eliminated in battle, then they are discarded. So they're not eliminated entirely. They go into the discard pile. So we're going to take a uh, long while off the board here. Put the battle marker back. Reputation markers. He's going to go away into the discard pile. And this uh, marine troop that we use, it did absorb a hit and it tells you that discard this card after the battle only if it absorbs a hit or if the French lose. So either way, we, we would have to discard this. Otherwise it says recycle. Now if we had to recycle it, it would go into this pile and potentially come back. But no, that's got to be discarded. So what does this mean for the British since they won the battle? Well, the army's going to stay there. It's not going to move forward again just because it won the battle. But it's not going to move backwards either. It's going to hold its position. And also for Braddock, his reputation now will be increased because he won a battle. So he's going to go from mediocrity to recognition. Now, there are optional rules in this game, and some of the optional rules let their, the leader reputation do a few more things. In the base game, the leader reputation will help keep a leader on the board if another leader comes along and applies for the same job that the, this current leader already has. So we may see that too. But you want your reputation to increase for sure. All right, so... That is it for the battle that I tried in my action point, which I should have went down to one because we spent that to conduct that battle, which went very poorly. That's going to end the French phase because we spent all of our action points and we got our butts kicked. And then you go into housekeeping, sack French leaders. And here it's if your reputation were low enough to warrant that. We have no French leaders, so it's not going to be an issue. Return the markers, any markers that were on cards that you, and we don't have any, but you could have some markers on the board that need to go back into the, the uh, token pile. Off to the side, reshuffle the draw pile. Well, that's only if the seven years war has commenced and it hasn't. So we're not gonna reshuffle the draw pile. That's it, that is one complete turn. All right, so let's, let's do another turn here. The way that works is we go back to the draw pile and draw four more cards. And again, it's four because the Seven Years' War has not erupted yet. So I'm just going to take four off in the order they were there. Put them off to the side so I know I've got to play those four cards. And we see what the first one is. And it's another action card. So this is an action. It's not troops. So if I were to spend one action point for this card, I would have to use it immediately. And this one's Brilliant Maneuver. One of your leaders can participate in a, an additional battle this turn with added plus one to its rating and an, an extra battalion strength. That's a strong card. So we're going to put that in our hand because remember, I've got to spend an action point to get that out. And then we go back to the second card. World Event. Militia Disbanded. So instead of rolling for initiative the way you saw me do it, this card wants you to roll a d6, and the d6 will determine 
what the outcome is. So if we have a battle this turn, we've got to use this for our initiative. So I'm just going to kind of put this in the middle of the board to remind me that will be how we roll for initiative in a battle. And we draw the next card. Another world event. So this is Epidemic Strikes Indians, which we have no... Well, we do have Indians on the board, so hold up here. Roll one die for each Indian card in the tableau. On a one, two, or three, it's discarded. On a four, five, or six, there's no effect. So let's roll a d6 and see what happens to our Shawnee Indians. That is a one, so I've got to discard this, and that's bad for me. So that goes into the discard pile. And the world event card, world events only happen once, whether you actually do the action or not, or if you can't do the action, I should say. The, it goes into the add a game pile, which I'm going to put up here in the corner. So that card is gone forever. Finally, we have one more card. And it is a French leader card. So French leader, we pulled a French leader card, which is good for us. It immediately goes onto our table area here. We can use him. And when you play, when you first put out a leader, grab a reputation and a battalion marker. And remember, reputation starts at mediocrity and the battalions are at the max level. So this guy's got four, that's pretty good. Now, one thing I should have mentioned also with these leader cards, if you look at the very bottom of the card, there is some, there's some writing there. And those are, leaders have special abilities. And this, his special ability says, once per turn, you may lower his reputation rating. So I can, I can choose to lower his reputation by one position, but not below dishonor and recycle without effect a just drawn British flagged non-leader card. If I pull a card that is a, uh, it's a British card, but it's not a leader, I can recycle it. So it would go back into the potential draw pile, but that's a way of getting a card off the board. And they can do that action once per turn. And you would mark it as having used an action to show that he did that. I'm going to put this back on here. So his reputation, mediocre, Battalions at four. So he's out. And that was the last card on the of the four that I pulled. That was the first step in the sequence of play. The second step now is it's the British phase. Rally or recall leaders, not necessary in this case. We have two leaders and no need to do that. So we're going to move right into the advanced led armies phase again. Starting with the track priority, we would any space that has an army. The armies now move forward. Well, there's only one, and that's still the Ohio Valley. They go up to space one. So they are one space away from Montreal. So I've I really got to do something there. So that is it for advancing the led armies. And then we go into the French phase. Again, the rally recall leaders don't have to worry about. Well, actually, no, we don't, because that's right. We got, we have our, um, who do we have? We have Vaudreuil. Vaudreuil. I don't, that's probably horribly wrong. <laughs> we'll call him Vo. We've got, uh, Vo is out now with his uh, four battalions. The next thing we do is gain our action points. Well, he's only a one rated leader, so we get one action point. And now we spend our action points. Now I've got nobody on the board that can help this guy fight a battle, but he does have four battalions. Unfortunately, Braddock has three. I, I got no choice here. I'm going to have to attack him again. Because I, if I spend the one to pull a, another auxiliary force card out, I've got no action points left to actually attack. So I'm going to spend an action point. And we're going to attack again. So I'm just going to pull the battle fault marker out just to remind me that he's fighting and I'll have to mark that as a battle fault. And then I'm going to show that that's who we're attacking again. We have the world event card. We don't roll for initiative the normal way. We're just going to roll a d6. Wait a minute here. What did I do? I completely misread this card. I thought this was the, the roll for initiative card, but no, this was, this was like the Indian card. So this was the uh, same thing for militia. So if you had any militia on the board, then you would roll and remove or they would stay. So I, I misread that. I thought there's a car, there's a world event card that says world map. And that's what I was thinking. So if you roll the world map card, would have done that. It would have taken the initiative process and basically did the same thing with the uh, dice to determine who has the initiative. So my mistake, those cards are the same type of cards and no effect because there were no militia out on the table anyway. So we do roll for initiative here the way we're supposed to. 
Braddock has one and Vo has one. That's going to get us plus one to our roll. We have nobody supporting us, so it's going to be a, just a straight roll off here. Whoever rolls higher is going to have the initiative. And we really need the initiative here. But we don't get it. The British get it because they rolled a four. So they're going to conduct first fire. They get three dice. I'm going to roll the white ones as much as I can here. So we're going to roll two whites and a red. So he's going to fire. And remember, he's looking for fives and sixes. So he gets one hit. Which is going to bring my battalions down from four to three. And then I return fire, so I'm going to roll three. So I'm going to fire, and I'm looking for fives or sixes here. And I get a hit, so that's one hit off of his battalion. So he goes down to three, or I'm sorry, two. All right, so who won the battle? We'll grab the rule book and we'll tell you who won the battle. Determine the victor. If both sides' leaders survive the exchange of fire with at least one battalion remaining, the victor is the side whose leader card lost the fewest battalions. Well, here they each lost one battalion, so that's not going to be the, the victory condition. The second bullet says if one, one side's leader is reduced to zero, which is what we saw happen the first time around, then the other side is the surviving leader and is the victor. Well, that's not the case here. So then it says for any other result, both leaders were discarded due to casualties or both leaders survived but lost an equal number of battalions, the battle is considered a draw. And then it says if the battle was a draw, the army marker remains in place, which is bad news for us. And otherwise, the uh, box would, the army marker would retreat. So that is it. And then it says if either side won, the reputation for the opposing leaders are adjusted up for victory and down for defeat. It was a draw here, so we're not gonna adjust the reputations at all. So that is it. It's simply that army stays put and we've lost a battalion and he's lost a battalion. So then I take the battle fault marker and just put it over the face of the leader to show that if I had more battles to fight, I would know he's already fought one and he cannot do it again. So that is it for me. I've spent my action point and I have no more, so we are back to the housekeeping phase. Sack French leaders. Well, I don't have any to sack. Return markers. In this case, I've got a battle fault marker I need to put back. No more markers I need to put back. And that is it. And we are in trouble on the Ohio Valley track. So we go back to, again, this draw phase. I'm going to draw four more cards. One, two, three, four. Set them to the side, because those are the four I've got to go through. And we'll pull the first one. And it is a British leader. So we can see here that that's a British leader. So the British leader, how does this work? When you pull a British leader card, he's going to apply for a job. What does that mean? Well, the leader placement will tell you where he wants to go. So you're going to roll 2d6, and we're going to find out where he wants to go. He could pot potentially go to any of these tracks. So he's going to apply for a job, they call it. So let's do that. We'll roll our 2d6 to see where he wants to go. So that is a 9. So you look at 9. He wants to go to Champlain. So there's nobody there now, so he's going to automatically get it. He's going to go, we're going to place him in Champlain. And we will put out his Battalion and reputation markers. So his reputation starts at mediocre, mediocrity, and his battalions are, are three. Again, bad news for us because now the Champlain line is going to move towards Montreal. All right, so he is out, and we draw the next card. Provincials, George Washington. That's not what we need at all. So George Washington is going to show up. And he's going to, he plays along the Ohio Valley. So if there's a battle on the Ohio Valley, then George is going to show up. More bad news for us. So that goes on to the British side of the table that they can play this whenever the Ohio Valley comes into play. That's all that means. Next card is another French leader, which we needed desperately. Let's see if I can focus that. And this is Disco, Disco, Disco. And this actually is a very good card for us. So I'm going to put him out, grab his reputation and battalion markers. So his reputation is mediocrity. 
And he's got four battalions, which is outstanding. He is also a two rated leader, so that's good. That's gonna give us three action points if we survive. <laughs> that's gonna give us three action points. The other thing it does is we flip the action points token over to its other side. And that other side says Discal gives us plus one action point at the end. So after we spend all of our action points, we get an additional free one from him to use. So that is great news for us. And now we have two leaders on the leaderboard or the, yeah, well, let's call it the leaderboard. <laughs> it's in the table there is what I'm trying to say. The two leaders we can choose from. The final card is Provincials again for the British. So those are more potential battalions that can show up to battle. And this is on the St. Lawrence line. So that's over here. Fortunately for us, there's no leaders there. So we'll put those off to the side. That's it. We've drawn our next four cards. So we go back to the sequence of play and it is the British phase. Rally recall leaders. We do not need to do that. We're still tied by the way. We've got two leaders for the British, two leaders for the French now. No need for any of that. So we go to the next thing, which is advance the lead armies. We have two lead armies now. And in the track priority, we would start with St. Lawrence. There's none there. None in the Great Lakes, none in Upper Maine. So it's just gonna be these two that advance, the Ohio and Champlain lines, which is really bad news for us. Starting, and you, you advance these in the track priority marker here. The Champlain line would advance first because it is ahead of Ohio. So they're gonna march up into Fort William Henry, which is a wilderness area. And now we go to the Ohio line. Well, unfortunately, the Ohio Valley Army marches right <laughs> into Montreal. And that's, that's it, game over. That's, that's horrible. That is the end of the game. Now, I, th I guess this game is playable in, what did it say, 50 minutes? Yeah, 50 minutes. I guess it is playable in 50 minutes if you do that poorly. Uh, a normal game, though, I don't think would take 50 minutes. But in this case, it's a lot less than 50 minutes. That, that really is bad for us. Now, the reason I lost instantly, you can build forts. There is not a fortress in there. Montreal is an open city. But I could, if I ever had the opportunity, I could have built a fort in there that would have, they would have at least had to have salted the fortress to take Montreal. But in this case, I had nobody in there, so they just advanced right on in. So that's, I've played this game a number of times. I've never seen one in like that. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, we did get to see a lot of things though. You get, at least you got to see how it worked, the mechanisms, most of the mechanisms. We didn't get to see everything. We never even got to the seven years war. So that's pretty embarrassing. What I might do, I'm going to go ahead and I'll go ahead and post this video. It, it was a complete playthrough after all. So that was interesting. And if there's enough interest, then maybe I'll play an entire game of this. I don't know. We'll see. I still have the CSA Civil War that I need to get back to as well. So if nothing else, you got to see a brief look at Empires in America. It's a really fun game. It's really enjoyable when they don't end that quickly. They are. <laughs> it's a really enjoyable game. And I really hope they do a reprint of this at some point. If you don't have it and get a copy of this. And like I said, I don't, this is, there may be copies floating around out there. I'm not sure. But if there are, I recommend picking one up because it is a fun States of Siege game. Well, that's it. All right. A very, very quick game of Empires in America. But sometimes that happens in these States of Siege games. If you like what I do. Uh, like the video, subscribe, and uh, there is a Patreon page if you're interested in really helping out the channel. That would be appreciated as well. As always, thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you back here next time.